Today with Joseph Prince. So Jesus, when He came in time, He had to die on the cross for two things. So the knowledge of God is is this. Number one, He wants to fully meet all the righteousness of God and satisfy offended justice, all right? Offended righteousness because of all our sins. God, and God sent Him for this purpose. And not only that, at the cross, He expressed the love heart of His Father. That God doesn't want to condemn you. God love you. Amen. And that's why at the cross, listen, all the claims of God on you, on your family, all the claims of righteousness is all fully met in the cross of Jesus Christ. Jesus came to be used. When people don't use Him, they will use their strength. They will use their wisdom. They will use their intellect. They will use their logic. They will use somebody else. They will use some, some other power, some occultic power, whatever. No, He wants you to use Him. And everyone that came and used Him, He was this, wow, woman, great is your faith. He loved it. I said, He loved it! Jesus found you. He's not lost. You were. Amen? We were crying. We were cold. We were lonely. We were distressed. We were, we were poor and we were hungry. We were thirsty. We were... We are so lonely out there and no one cares for us. We think no one cares for us. Here comes the Good Shepherd. He will leave the 99 to find you. No real shepherd, okay, in this world today will leave 99 healthy, protected ones to risk for one person that's already probably dead and gone or a victim of a wolf somewhere, all right? But Jesus did. He's the greatest shepherd. He will find you. I tell you this, He will find you. When God's favour shines on you, everything they throw against you falls flat. Today, for the first time ever, you can get Joseph's foundational, life-changing book, Unmerited Favour, as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry. Respond today, and we will also send you Joseph's powerful teaching sermon, You Stand Permanently in the Favour of God, for your gift of any amount. Here's what some people have said about Unmerited Favour. I wanted to share unmerited favor with every one of my friends because it is so full of Jesus-based principles for living. I used to be addicted to alcohol and cigarettes. After reading Unmerited Favor, today I am delivered of both, not by my own strength, but because of Christ. We believe that you too will be greatly blessed by this book. And for a specific gift to the ministry, you can complete your collection with one of Joseph's latest DVD albums, Live Undefeated in the Face of Adversity. God wants you to reign victoriously in every area of your life. These resources will show you how His undeserved favor can be released into your situation even at your lowest points. Don't miss out on these dynamic teaching resources. Order yours today at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433 today. Let's go right into the Word of God. God has something special for us. And you know, there are a lot of friends, a lot of our friends out there who really need to hear the good news. They need to hear the gospel. They need to understand what the gospel is all about. And in 1 Timothy chapter 1, it says this, 1 Timothy chapter 1 verse 11, according to the glorious gospel of the blessed God, Paul said, which was committed to my trust. So the Apostle Paul writing this, said that this blessed, this glorious gospel of the blessed God is committed to my trust. God entrusted me with it. Now notice this word, blessed God. It is not the usual word in the Greek for blessed or blessings. The usual word is eulogia. Eulogia, okay? But this word here is makarios, which is the word for happy, happiness. So let's put that in here. It'll be the Glorious gospel of the happy God. The glorious gospel of the happy God. Is that how the world sees Him? Is that how your friends, your colleagues see Him? Is that how you see Him? A happy God. You know, God wants us to know that when it comes to the gospel, He is a happy God. There is something in the Bible that uh, we need to understand, and it's, it's this. It's called the knowledge of God. If you, you say, if, what is one pursuit that God wants me to have in life? It is the knowledge of God. The greatest knowledge you can have in this side of heaven in your life is the knowledge of God. The greatest knowledge that gives birth to all other knowledge is the knowledge of God. In fact, Jeremiah says it like this. 
Jeremiah 9. Let not the wise man boast. Halal in Hebrew, boast. Literally, it's boast. Let not the wise man boast in his wisdom. Let not the strong man boast in his muscles. Okay, the word muscle is not there. Boast in his might. Let not the rich man boast in his riches. But he that boasts, let him boast that he knows me, that I am the Lord of compassion, and I execute justice and righteousness. These things I delight in. So Jeremiah says that very clearly. The greatest knowledge to have is the knowledge of God. And you can boast in that knowledge. Now, once Jesus Christ, our, our Lord and Savior, He's the only one who has this knowledge of God. Amen. The rest all pale in comparison to the full knowledge of God. Jesus had these two uh, aspects of the knowledge of God that it was impossible for man to know. Number one, Jesus knew completely the love heart of His Father. Jesus knew like no other man, like no other angel, the love, the love heart of His Father God. That's the first thing you need to know about the knowledge of God. Number two, Jesus, the other aspect of the knowledge of God is, Jesus is the only one who fully knows the righteousness of God and how great is our offense towards God. I repeat, Jesus is the only one who fully knows God's righteousness, God's level, okay? And how great is our offense to God? Now, we think we've all offended God, all right? But we do not know how. Because our idea of God's righteousness, God's requirements is so low that we measure God's righteousness based on our thoughts, based on what we have heard taught, what we have heard other men taught, uh, teach us. But the thing is that God's righteousness must be measured by His level. So Jesus, in order for, for Him to express God's heart, He had to fully meet God's righteousness. And He came as us. He was born like us. He came as a man and His whole purpose to die on the cross is so that His death fully met all the claims of divine holiness and righteousness on, on your life and my life. He fully met it all. Amen. It's not just a mere payment. It was way above the payment. Because if you know the man who died on that cross, this man of whom the Father split the heavens open and said, this is my beloved son. In him, I am well pleased. This is the one that the Bible says, he holds all things together. This is the one that John the Baptist said, he that comes after me in time is preferred before me in terms of prestige in terms of position. Even though he came after me, I was born first as his cousin in the natural. But he, he in time came after me, but he in terms of position was before me. So Jesus, when he came in time, he had to die on the cross for two things. So the knowledge of God is, is this. Number one, he wants to fully meet all the righteousness of God and satisfy offended justice all right, offended righteousness because of all our sins. God, and God sent him for this purpose. And not only that, at the cross, he expressed the love heart of his father. That God doesn't want to condemn you. And God loves you. Amen. And that's why at the cross, listen, all the claims of God on you, on your family, all the claims of righteousness is all fully met in the cross of Jesus Christ. Oh, mm. this gospel of a happy God. And that's the reason why one time, and you all heard me share it a few weeks ago, there was a group of people that Jesus was with and they came to Jesus and all they wanted was that, you know, we look to you like a superstar, like you're a celebrity. Can we take pictures with you? You know, smile, Jesus. My selfie's on. You know, and it's like they're surrounding Jesus or because he's a leader. Can you give me the secrets to how you're so successful? How come you can do all these miracles? Can you give me all your secrets? You know, they look at him as a teacher. But they don't look at him as a savior. You know, if you're drowning and you look at the beach far away and you see a guy on the pier, all right, you, you hope that he's a savior. A lifeguard. And if you shout, ah, help me. He says, have you read my book? Mm, catch, catch, catch. How to swim. 
<laughs> and that's the mentality people have. So Jesus is not at home with people who look at him as a model. Now, don't misunderstand me. After you know him, he does teach you, all right? And he's a wonderful model and a, a pattern for our lives. But these things are all secondary. The main thing, the main relationship he wants you to have with you is his Savior. And so he, he gave a few illustrations, of one of which I preached a, a, a few Sundays ago. Anyway, and then the crowd started growing. This crowd that sees him as a model, that sees him as a teacher, they started growing. And Jesus knew there's only one way to thin them out. He turned around. Notice he doesn't appreciate people who just follow him, even if it's a crowd. People don't mind crowd as long crowd. You know, I don't care, man. Instagram, as long as got, uh, got people paying attention, bad attention, or good lah. I feel like I've been noticed. <laughs> You know, today's world is so sad. Don't make friends with people that you don't even spend time with over a dinner, over coffee. You don't even know who they are. These are not friends. And their opinion should not even bother you. Don't lose your life because of technology. Huh? Okay, anyway. Jesus, look around. This large crowd, a large crowd is falling after him. He turns and says, If any man come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross and follow after me. Whoa. They start saying, whoa. We carry the cross? Mm, I just remembered I had an appointment with Martha. Where is she? Where is she? You know, start thinking out. And, the, and it continues right to this chapter. That was chapter 14. That was towards the end. And right, it brings us to this John, Luke 15. Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near to Jesus to hear Jesus. See? Then all the tax collectors and the sinners drew near. Why did they say sinners? Because now they come to him as what? Savior. There's something they see in him, the compassion, the love. They're not coming to learn. They're coming to be saved. They're coming to be loved. They're coming to be embraced. Then drew near to him all the sinners and the tax collectors. Actually, no one need to worry about being found out that he's a sinner. These are the ones Jesus came for. <laughs> the ones that you need to be concerned about are those who say that they're not sinners. Then Jesus says, I'm not your savior. There's nothing to say. Yeah, I, I'm not a sinner. I can't be anything in your life. But if you're a sinner, you have all of me. I'm all sinner, Lord. No problem. I'm all savior. I'm part sinner. I'm part savior. So there's no problem at all confessing that you're a sinner. Amen? That's what we all were. Yes. Then drew near. And the Pharisees, oh, they are still there, see? And by the way, not, not, not only there, they are still here. <laughs> they are still here in the world today. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained, saying, this man receives sinners and eats with them. What a wonderful Accusation. What a wonderful accusation. What the people say of Joseph Prince, he receives sinners and he eats with them. He should be picketing against them. He should be doing things that show that he is again, but he, he receives them. Is Jesus compromising his holiness? Is anyone more holy than Jesus? No, we are missing the gospel of the happy God. Amen. What makes Jesus happy? Are sinners that come to Him. That see their need of Him. If I can say it like this, it's worth your while to write it down somewhere. He came, I'm using my words carefully, all right? And God doesn't mind me using these words. He wants me to tell you this. Jesus came to be used when people don't use him, they will use their strength. They will use their wisdom. They will use their intellect. They will use their logic. They will use somebody else. They will use some, some other power, some occultic power, whatever. No, he wants you to use him. And everyone that came and used him, he was this, wow, woman, great is your faith. He loved it. I said, he loved it. He came to be used. So, Jesus turned around to this crowd that came to him. And he was so happy with them. And he, he told them a parable. He spoke a parable to them saying, 
What man of you having a hundred sheep, if he loses one of them, does not leave the 99 in the wilderness and go after the one which is lost until he finds it. I love it. We say, I found Jesus. No, Jesus found you. He's not lost, you were. Amen? We were crying, we were cold, we were lonely, we were distressed, we were, we were poor and we were hungry, we were thirsty, we were, we were so lonely out there and no one cares for us. We think no one cares for us. Here comes the good shepherd. He will leave the 99 to find you. No real shepherd, okay, in this world today will leave 99 healthy, protected ones to risk for one person that's already probably dead and gone or a victim of a wolf somewhere, all right? But Jesus did. He's the greatest shepherd. He will find you. I'll tell you this, He will find you. And though you mock Him, though you blaspheme Him, He will look away from all that and look at your need for Him. He will hear the cry that you try to mirage and try to shield and try to put up this front of a cool, strong, I have it all together kind of guy. He sees your heart. He sees the broken pieces. He knew when your trust was betrayed at that young age. He knew when you first said within your heart, I will never feel strongly for anybody again. And that's why He loves you because He knows you more than anybody else. He knows everything about you. He still loves you. He goes in search until, I love it, until he finds it. Amen. And some of us, we don't persevere, you know. Oh, hungry already. <laughs> Time for roti prata, man. <laughs> I, I, I did my best. But I, you can't say I didn't search. I did search. But it, <laughs> stomach is calling, you know. There's no perseverance. But I love this, until he finds it. Wow. And then he finds it. When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders. Look at that, look at the attitude, look at his heart. This is our shepherd, this is Jesus. This is what America needs to see. This is what China needs to see. This is what Europe needs to see. This is what the world needs to see, a gospel of grace. This is what they need to see, the real Jesus. Not the veiled Jesus in the Old Testament, veiled in types, figures and shadows. Here he is revealed and he has, who has seen me has seen the Father. Look at it, rejoicing. He finds it rejoicing. Not a word about why do you go astray? Why do you not obey? Why do you do this? Why do you do that? You walk, okay? I'll tie you to my, my, my belt. Follow me now. When the prodigal son came home, in the same chapter, Jesus shares, after this story, he shares about the lost coin and the lost son. Even the, the son that was spending the father's money or the inheritance on riotous living, going to prostitutes. When he came back, not a word about the loss. But the father spent some more. If you know how full he is, he's just happy you're coming home. Rejoicing, what an attitude. Rejoicing. It's good enough to say, <sighs> mm. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's, I mean, you gotta give credit. The guy, the guy, search until he found. You know, but this is exceeding abundantly. You know, Jesus always exceeds your expectation. Always. Though some 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 mothers came to Jesus in the Gospels, for Jesus to, and it says specifically for Jesus to lay his hands on their on their children. But when Jesus saw the children, he embraced them. He always exceeds our expectation. Amen. He doesn't answer our prayers. He answers us exceeding abundantly above. Oh, we can ask a thing. Exceeding abundantly above all we can ask a thing. Let's try again. Huh? Exceeding abundantly above all we can ask a thing. Yeah. That was a dunk, man. He answers exceeding abundantly above all we ask a thing. In fact, what brought the prodigal son his heart to turn around, to repent, if you will, those of you who are very careful about the word repentance, and Pastor Prince, we would, you preach more on repentance. This is the repentance. When did the son repent? When he said, in my father's house, there's bread enough and to spare. I think he didn't come back, come back because he loved his father. I don't see it in his, in his uh, words. He came back because of his tummy. He was hungry. 
He came back because of bread. And did God exceed his expectation? Yes. He only thought of the bread. He received kisses. He only thought of food. He received an embrace. He only thought to be a servant. He was given the ring and reinstated. No, friend. You can never, you, you can never outgive him. You can never outgive him. Amen? So, look at the attitude. When he, has, he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me! I have found my sheep which was lost. Today, some of you can contribute to that happiness. You can make him happy by saying, Lord, I'm here. No wonder I came here today. All right? And you are the reason God is happy. Heaven rejoice. When he comes home, he calls. I say to you, likewise, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 just persons who need no repentance. So those of you who say that, Pastor Brains, you must preach more on repentance. This whole verse is on repentance. And the story we just read, the, the sheep that was found. All right, how did the sheep repent? It was the shepherd that sought. It was the shepherd who found. It was the shepherd that put the sheep to rest on his strong shoulders. It was a shepherd who was rejoicing. It was a shepherd that called for a party. Amen. What did the sheep do? The sheep allowed himself to be loved. The sheep consented to be carried. That's all God wants from you. And that to him is repentance. Amen. That to him is repentance. Repentance means literally in the Greek, change of mind. You used to think God is out to get you, yeah, he's out to get you into his arms. Amen? Your mind has changed. You see a grumpy God, now you see a happy God. That's repentance. Amen? Are you with me so far? Yep. When the son came home, same chapter, Jesus talked about the father, he arose and came to his father, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion. And the father ran and fell on his neck, the son's neck, and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I've sinned against… Wait, I want to ask you a question. Did the son confess first and the father kissed him? And the, son, the father embraced, the father ran. Did the father listen to the confession first? Or did the father love him first? The father ran to him first. The father kissed him first. The father received him first. Which one came first? Loved him first. Embraced him first. Kissed him first. Then the son said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Did the father allow him to continue? Because his rehearsed speech was, make me one of your hired servants. No, he never got around to that. Next verse, the father said to his servants, bring out the best rope, put it on him, supply. Put a ring on his hand, supply. Sandals on his feet, supply. Bring the fatted calf, supply. The only sorry person that day was the fatted calf. All right, bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be happy. Yeah. Be happy. Let's eat and be happy. Man. It's about celebration. You know, tell your friends, hey, you know something? God is not holding anything against you. And, 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 and the, the religious Christians will start saying, whoa, whoa, whoa who, does, who, who does this person think? No, no, don't worry. You'll get so safe and they won't. It's time for me to say, let's, let's forget all these naysayers and let's go for the souls. Man. All right? Don't tell them, would you like to embrace Christianity? This is not about Christianity. It's about reality. The true love story of the universe. Amen? And, and, and don't say, uh, 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 you know, uh, it, it'd be good for you to come to church. No, all that can happen later. Amen? When people are saved, they want to come to church. Because in church, you hear messages like this. And you'll be blessed. Can I have a good amen? amen. Have you been blessed? Yes. All right. Praise the Lord. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Give Him the praise. Hallelujah. When God's favor shines on you, everything that's true against you falls flat. Today, for the first time ever, you can get Joseph's foundational, life-changing book, Unmerited Favor, as a thank you for your gift of any amount to the ministry. Respond today, and we will also send you Joseph's powerful teaching sermon, You Stand Permanently in the Favor of God, for your gift of any amount. Here's what some people have said about Unmerited Favor. I wanted to share unmerited favor with every one of my friends because it is so full of Jesus-based principles for living. I used to be addicted to alcohol and cigarettes. After reading Unmerited Favor, today I'm delivered of both, not by my own strength, but because of Christ. We believe that you too will be greatly blessed by this book. 
And for a specific gift to the ministry, you can complete your collection with one of Joseph's latest DVD albums, Live Undefeated in the Face of Adversity. God wants you to reign victoriously in every area of your life. These resources will show you how His undeserved favor can be released into your situation even at your lowest points. Don't miss out on these dynamic teaching resources. Order yours today at josephprince.org or call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433 today. I heard that Jesus loved me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. However, I wasn't sure if the Father loved me. And so I was kind of a little mixed up in my teenage years, and and partly because of that, I didn't know God. I got into the temptations in the world, went out there in the party scene, and went full throttle, full ahead, and, you know, it got pretty bad there over the years. You know, Unmerited Favor was the first book I read, and I remember being up to like 4 o'clock in the morning, reading that book, and just like crying, you know, because of the goodness of God that was showed in that book. It was the finished work of Jesus Christ, the love of God expressed. And, and, and the grace of God, you know, that, that it just exploded within me. And I started having results in my life, you know. I stopped struggling in areas of my life. And the revelation I started to get of the Father's love toward me, and I started realizing that's the message that I, I needed all along. Thank you, Grace Revolution Partners, for your prayers and generous support that helps us broadcast the gospel into millions of homes around the world. With your help, we're also able to be on the ground to reach out and make a difference in impoverished communities across Asia. If you've been blessed by today's message, we invite you to partner with us to impact the world with the gospel of grace. Call us toll free at 1-877-769-5433 or visit us at josephprince.org slash partner today. Joseph Prince Ministries is a Section 501c3 nonprofit organization, and your gift is tax deductible for the amount that exceeds any fair market value of the materials you receive from us.